Hey, good evening. I'm Chief Meteorologist Travis Meyer. It's not raining right now, but you see behind me something that wasn't a whole lot of fun. That was the tornadoes. Uh, we put together as we uh, went through our Wednesday at tornado tracks and uh, today the National Weather Service started going out surveying all these different tornado tracks looking for where the actual tornadoes actually landed. We had to do generalizations just because of we didn't have any ground truth and what the National Weather Service does. They go out and ground truth it. They do the surveys. They look for the strength of the storms based on the damage and then that's when they give us the report and it goes into the history books pretty much at that time. Well, we did find out that right in this zone where we do have this uh, kind of labeled into a little bit brighter red or I shouldn't say brighter, but a thicker red. Uh, that is one of the locations the National Weather Service went out to check to make sure that uh, what was going on with that particular storm. Also, we had them checking one that was uh, the, the one that went through the uh, near the Wagner area. And we had the videos from J.D. Uh, McManus. Uh, he had that as it was crossing Highway 69. So we found out a couple of things. We still have to look at the one that's down in McAllister, east side of McAllister, Pittsburgh County, also around in Tahlequah and in LaFleur County. But the ones that they were able to check out, Talala tornado, which was mainly northwestern Rogers County, just a small part of southeastern Washington County, and those are just to the north and east of Tulsa, a rate an EF2, so that was fairly strong. That's strong enough. Uh, and that was 110 to 120 mile per hour winds. It uh, went about 10 miles, and interesting enough is that it was uh, basically two-thirds to three-fourths of a mile wide for a period of time, which is very wide. If that was in a highly populated area, there would have been a tremendous amount of damage from that. There was also a second tornado with that. They are still going to be checking on that, and they'll have more information on that. So that was kind of an interesting side fact on that, a twin tornado. Uh, Bald Hill, uh, where it initially touched down, was rated EF0, so about 60 to 80 mile an hour winds in that area. And then also just north of Haskell, the tornado that went over through Wagner County is now rated EF1. Multiple other tornadoes are yet to be determined, and they'll be working on that for the next week. And we're still working on rainfall totals. It won't quit. The last three days, we've had rainfalls, a lot of significant rain. And, I mean, you look out to the west, western Pawnee County, that have been perfect rain, inch and a half. Uh, but you start looking at everybody else, and it's just uh, wild. And Tulsa is very deceiving because I had like four inches of rain, and my rain gauge just a little under uh, four inches. And the National, or I shouldn't say the National Weather Service, but one of the city employees had a, a, right at five inches of rain. So it just depended upon on your location. So we had some spot areas that were extremely heavy around Tulsa as well. And then most areas picked up a lot of water. There's a little zone here you could say that maybe wasn't quite as much, but still everybody's saturated and then it's way over the top once you go to the south as well. And we have additional rain that's coming in and that's the problem is that we're going to have an additional rain off for our Friday time period and rain and showers and thunderstorms will probably add up to another inch. And then some isolated areas as you see in the yellow could go over two inches. Uh, so it's like, oh, good grief, here we go. So that could really start to make some big issues, especially if it comes all at once. So we're going to be watching this closely. We do have that flash flood watch east of Tulsa for our eastern county. So just be aware, and that's all for Friday. So here's the way it looks. Uh, we do have a chance for a few isolated showers or a thunder shower toward morning. We'll be in the 50s to near 60. There's warm air trying to build its way back up. And then it's going to start to come back south. But this is during the day. We'll have showers. We'll have some thunderstorms around. Off and on periods of rain could be heavy at times. And then gradually that'll weaken by late afternoon. And hopefully by about 5 o'clock rush hour time, we'll get most of the heavier rains out of the area. In fact, most of them should be in Arkansas by that time. Uh, but we'll be looking at a, kind of a rebound in temperatures once we get past uh, some of the rain. But we'll be very chilly for a while in the Tulsa area. And, of course, the Bixby Barbecue and Blues Festival going on. And so that kind of starts, it doesn't kind of, it does start on Friday late afternoon. So it's going to be a swamp for a while. So don't wear your good shoes if you're going down to Bixby for that event. It'll be chilly in the morning on Saturday in the low to mid 50s. That's pretty cool. But enjoy the fresh air while we have it because it won't be long and we won't have any more north winds blowing in. It'll just be sauna time. Uh, we'll be in the 70s. Gorgeous Saturday. We'll get to dry out and watch the waters drop across the area. And then Sunday looks pretty doggone good as well. So the breakdown tonight will be in around 62, partly and mostly cloudy skies. Chance of showers developing by morning. Some rumbles of thunder. Rain and thunderstorms around at noon. Some could be heavy, unfortunately. And then it will end, though, late afternoon. So our Friday night, in fact, it uh, should be first Friday night downtown uh, here at the Guthrie Green area. So if you're going to be in downtown, the rain should be ending. If you're going to be at Bixby, it should be ending. And we'll be looking for temperatures 70s Saturday, 80 on Sunday. Still in the 80s, warm and muggy Monday, Tuesday. But we do have a return chance of thunderstorms late Sunday night, Monday. And then the chances really bump up like late Tuesday and Wednesday with a chance of severe weather that could uh, be uh, moving across the area. We'll have a front coming through as well, and then I'll kind of bog down with some showers and storms. That'll be followed again by another chance of storms by the time we get into late Friday. All right, that's a lot of weather, but we have a lot more coming up tonight at 9:10. I hope you join us. And in the meantime, have a great rain-free evening.